All right, so this is Todd Atkins, and I'm here with Derek Galanis. And I'm going to do kind of a new thing, like once a week, um, kind of like Atkins Insider news recap of just a few interesting stories so we don't overwhelm people. And, uh, you know, Derek's a great, uh, I'd say, order of uh, different things fighting-wise, but he's he's uh, very thoughtful when it comes to you know, just different things. So I think he's going to be great for this. And uh, as always, before we start, check out Live to Fight Design. That's my sponsor. If you use my promo code, Todd Atkins, you can get $20 off your order. They make fight banners and gym banners. So check them out on Instagram at Live to Fight Design. And uh, Derek, you know, people who watch my show, they know who you are. So uh, maybe we could talk, just kind of talk, by talking about some of these news stories and I wanted to lead off with Connor, obviously, um, <laughs> obviously he was accused of a uh, sexual assault again. I think this is probably like the fifth time, but the thing that sh shocked me, you know, the other allegations, you really don't see him with the victim here. There is a video of him grabbing her hand and leading it, leading her into the bathroom. So I just want to know what you think about this one. Well, you know, Todd, I, I watched the video uh, three, four times, and I kept looking for the, you know, what some of the, the guy, commentaries uh, were, commentators were saying about it, where Connor had essentially grabbed this woman and took her by force. Now, I know part of it might be because they're blocking her out, but I don't see that. You know, I see what, you know, oversexed young people do, grabbing a girl and pulling her into the bathroom. And, and by the way, while I don't doubt, you know, his security would help him, right? They know who butters their bread. Um, at the same time, if, if the girl was shouting, I don't want to go, stop, uh, I'd have a hard time believing that they would let her go. So I don't, I don't know what happened, man. I mean, like every one of these situations, I think you really have to take it slow. Um, obviously, guys do terrible things. Um, at the same time, you know, guys who are in Connor's position, um, you know, women have a reason to say things about them. So, you know, we just got to take it slow. The facts have to come out. Um, I don't think that that video shows what obviously you think it showed also. And I'd love to hear why you think it showed that. I mean, that that seemed to me like a, a clubbing scene. You know, a guy who gets excited about a girl, tries to drag her into seclusion. But I didn't see like a, a forceful, violent thing going on. No, no, that's not what I mean. What I mean is like, I didn't expect them to be seen together at all. You know what I mean? So it does give, well, it doesn't prove her story. It does show that they were together. You know, when I saw this, when I heard the story come out, I thought, this is so outlandish. It couldn't, this girl just made all this up. She probably didn't even meet him. I didn't expect to see him holding, grabbing, you know, holding her hand and walking with her in the bathroom. I was like, whoa, you know, and it doesn't look like the kind of girl that, you know, someone of his stature would attract or try to go out it's just a random person you know like most celebrities you see deal with other celebrities or professionals you know call girls or whatever he's just going after random people you know like it, it's kind of weird you know and even if he didn't do any of the things that she alleges that video does put them together in this kind of in the location that she described you know I, I never thought we would see a video of these two people together. I thought it was just all made up. Yeah, I've heard some other commentary, though, that said also, like, there's three things she's alleges that the video essentially disproves. And I can't remember what they are, but, you know, one of them was like that security separated her from her friend and forced her in the, you know, the bathroom. And those things don't look to have happened. Now, look. Look, a girl, as far as I'm concerned, can go anywhere she wants and she shouldn't be assaulted, right? I get that. But at the same time, if, if it looks like she willingly went in that bathroom with him, you know, her story's going to have less credibility. Yeah, but, you know, like, for example, Mike Tyson went to jail off a lot less than that. Well, well listen, I'm not one to talk about, you know, systemic racism and whatnot in the country, Todd. I don't, you don't step into those potholes. But look, you know, Tyson was the black heavyweight champion of the world. You know, he fascinated people and he scared people to death. You know, Connor, I think, has a different public persona. Although lately, 
he's been very manic, you know, very much like Dana got, you know, when, when the UFC was a success. And, and we know what that kind of power can do to people. They think, like, I can do anything I want. Um, and yeah, so did he do something really, really dumb? Um, you know, maybe. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> it just seems like a dumb thing to do. Like you're saying, why would you be involved with just regular people who aren't going to respect your privacy? Like another celebrity would or a professional. It's just like, why would you throw it all away for that? You know, Todd, I don't know why people, when, when I was a, a rich criminal, right, you know, all, all sorts of, I hired in nothing but professionals, partly because I didn't want the very problems you're talking about right now. Now, that didn't stop me from having problems, right, because those girls, you know, occasionally will try to extort you too. And, you know, if you look up my name, you'll find uh, Derek Alanis filed uh, your domestic dispute against uh, Courtney Maria Turner. And she was, you know, a girl I was seeing from the clubs and you're know, trying to extort me. And, and I asked my lawyer what to do. They said, you got a file on her. You know, she she hit you and, and the, she brought the cops to my house and the cops sided with me because they knew she was a liar. And maybe, you know, maybe Connor, you know, because he's such a big star, maybe he has some of those advantages. But on the other side, he's also got a lot more people looking to get something from him. Look, his best friend Artem and him fell out of her money, right? You know, what's some random girl going to say he did potentially? Yeah, and especially when you have the history that he has with this. He's had quite a few allegations now. Yeah, Todd, he's been acting manic lately. You know, and, and the, the thing on the yacht, right, with the, the girl who said, you know, he went crazy on her or whatever. So, yeah, it's not looking good for Connor. You know, he's missed his Chandler fight. And and maybe what Dana says is true. You know, when you have hundreds of millions of dollars, you know, the urge to get up and fight in the morning isn't so great, you know? Yeah, and that girl's car was set on fire, too. So that might have had something to do with it not going forward. Well, that, that was probably the tin of heads, right? Like, that's the thing when you become a star and you're from those neighborhoods, man. Like, the gangsters will look out for you, right? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, what I don't understand is you would think like his security or maybe people that, I don't know, like you would think they would say, look, maybe this isn't the best idea, you know. You know, we could go back to the hotel and actually get a a professional to come see you. This isn't, this isn't it. And especially, he's doing this in front of tons of people that are filming him. It's nuts. Well, Todd, you don't have to tell me. I mean, I agree with you 100%. That's why my lifestyle previously was like that. But, you know, let's remember something, too. People do things for weird reasons, like Jeffrey Epstein. Like, you you got to wonder, like, what in the heck were you thinking, guy? You know, um, why didn't you, you fly to another country or do something different? But, you know, people are into power, right? And and clearly, even from the the the... Uh, the video, we can see that that was very much a Connor power play. I mean, I remember doing that when I was good looking at 18 years old, you know, and, and girls weren't, weren't opposed to kissing you for that and stuff. And maybe Connor's sort of reliving that that wild youth because he's got so much money. But he's got to realize, man, that that time's passed. You know, he's 35 years old or something, you know. Yeah. And, and I have to wonder, like, what's the relationship with him and D Devlin like, you know? She's about to have his fourth kid. I guess they're engaged. Well, you know, Tom, I mean, look, it's very clear. And I've known a lot of people like this from my old life. Um, they have an open relationship. You know, it's understood on one side, right? It's understood Connor's a superstar and he can do what he wants. But his responsibility is to take care of D for the rest of her life, right? And and she's not to ask too many questions. I mean, I it doesn't take a rocket scientist to, to know that. You know, I'm not speaking of things I know. I just, I've known relationships like that. So she has kids that are her insurance policy, right? Connor's never going to abandon his kids completely. So, you know, and in the meantime, they, they put on the facade of a happy couple for the camera. But obviously the reality is Connor is now living his rock star dream, which is every man's dream, right? Um, you know, but every man wouldn't sexually assault a woman. So let's just find out what happened, man. Yeah, and the biggest thing for me is like, okay, maybe you guys are in an open relationship or whatever, but your kids are going to see that stuff one day, you know, and they're 
they were probably going to be embarrassed by it, you know, to see the way you treated the mom. They don't, they don't care about all that open relationship nonsense, you know. They're, they're probably going to be humiliated by that stuff. Without a doubt, man. Well, listen, I mean, unfortunately, look, I, you know, I, you know what I am. I'm, I'm, I'm a karate teacher and I can tell you this, you know, the parents bring their kids to us and say, please, you know, fix my kid, give them discipline. And what I can't say to them is you are the problem. Sorry. But unfortunately that's what we do. We damage our kids. Um, seems to be a human trait, you know? Yeah. I mean, I could see like when they're like high school age, their classmates are, will have seen that stuff and, They'll say, yeah, your dad's well off, but he's a, you know, they're going to have to put up with that stuff. Yeah, they're also going to be the guys with Conor McGregor as a dad. So you you take the good with the bad. So it is what it is, man. Yeah, that's true. So let's go on to the next story, which is more attached to me. Scott Coker officially coming out and confirming what I said all along, which is that Bellator was involved you know, is heavily involved as one of the two entities, I guess, that are up for this sale. So take it away. So, so Todd, I mean, look, I'm just as interested as every other one of your fans, man. I, I'd like to know your source. I know you're not going to tell me your source, but I got to ask one question. Is it the same source that gave you the lead that Connor's not tired of fighting with Chandler? Yes. <laughs> Well, well, listen, man, I'll tell you this. I love the way Coker answered the question. It was like typical, you know, business America. He, he didn't confirm exactly what you said, but he did confirm exactly what you yeah. said. Well, you know, Viacom's in those talks, you know, and, and I get it. You know, Coker's basically saying like, you know, I'm not involved on that level. And by the way, I'm sure he's not, you know, Viacom's mm -hmm. got a lot of people above Coker out there shopping it so you know it's interesting i mean does it mean that viacom is is disappointed with the numbers and you know you know coker phrased it as you know we're not for sale we're looking for a strategic partner so i can't see i can't wait to see how that all comes out and for me i feel like you know pfl has to close on this the other players out there i don't you know, some people said maybe 1FC. 1FC doesn't need this. They have a big audience in Asia. They can still run off of that. I know they trying to do some stuff in America, but their audience is Asia. PFL, I think if they don't pull this off, it's not going to happen for them. Yeah, no, man. Listen, I was his, how do I say this about PFL? I'm, you know, friends with Don Davis or whatever his name is on LinkedIn. And, uh, I look at his stuff and I kind of laugh at it because, you know, obviously I'm a big MMA guy and I'm a pundit, really. And I don't really know his guys. I don't really care about his guys and their retread. And it seems like garbage product. But I'll tell you something else, Todd. So does David Feldman's bare, bare Knuckle. It seems like garbage product. But guess what? There's so much out there now. And I think what that has to do with, man, is the streaming and everything else, right? There's content for everything. So now, you know, these guys, these little niche businesses can jump in there. And, you know, PFL's got a, a great argument. I love it. Look, we're right behind the UFC. I mean, I don't know how true that even is. But if they buy Bellator, it'll be true. Yeah, I mean, getting Francis Ngannou isn't enough. They have to close on this. They won't keep all those fighters, obviously. But there's about, you know, I'd say 30, 20 to 30 that would really help them to have you know, that already have an audience and some like Pico that I think have big crossover appeal, you know, if he's on the right platform, Pico would be a huge star if he's in the UFC already, you know, as would some guys like Michael Page would probably be a, just cause how outlandish, but they have a lot of, of good fighters left over from when Bjorn was there. Pitbull who's fighting tonight. Great fighter, yeah. you know, and AJ McKee, great fighter. So, yeah. Yeah, they have some guys that would really help PFL if they signed them. And I think they have to close on this deal because they don't, then they're just left with what they have. And I don't think it I don't think they'll last. I think they have to do this. Well, look, man, they pulled off Nganu, like you mentioned. They pulled off Jake Paul, right? So obviously that guy gets deals done. 
So let's let's wait and see if he can get this deal done too. I mean, listen, uh, full disclosure on Aaron Pico. I remember when I was still training with the scrap pack and living in San Francisco, he was on Dragon House cards all the time. It's just one of many guys. And to see him burst out is really cool, man. And, and what that has to do with, and nothing's fair about the world as we know, but, you know, obviously, uh, you know, Bellator's in the Bay now because that's where Coker was. So they moved the headquarters there, essentially. Just like, you know, uh, when Coker owned Strike Force, it was Missouri where he got Tyler Woodley, right? And it was uh, the Bay where he got the whole scrap back, essentially. Um, so that's really interesting how that, how, you know, how where things are can really affect, you know, star fighters and where they go and whatnot. But I love Aaron Pico, man. I used to see him live when he was a nobody. Yeah, I think he'd be a massive star if he was in the UFC already. You know, Bellator's, he just can only get so much traction there. Yeah, man, and that's the story with all those other leagues, right? You can't get too much traction um, unless you're in the UFC. And the moment you start getting traction, they're going to put you in, right? They'll put you on. So we have this weird system where it's retreads and guys that kind of you wonder if they really ever could have make it. But look, I'm sure the Fieri brothers are just as good as any, you know, bantamweights and featherweights in the UFC, lightweights. Um, because look, look at the guys who've come over. Chandler, um, who's uh, Gaethje, came from World Series of Fighting, which what became PFL. Um, you, let's give some other guys. Alvarez, who won the title. Right. And Dana wasn't nice on any of those guys. He he gave them really tough matchups. So it just shows you. But listen, man, everything is promotion in the end. People are going to believe what they see. You remember Chael Sonnen talked about Dana making Ar Arlovsky into a star out of nowhere. And that's literally what the UFC can do. They could take a guy who couldn't fight and they could make him to a star and the public would never know one way or the other. Now, I know you were really interested in talking about Tiafima Lopez. Um Kind of give me your thoughts on the fight and then maybe what happened after. So listen, man, I look, I, I, I skipped the UFC for the Tiafimo fight. Obviously, you know, it being free on ESPN2 played a factor in that. But I also wanted to see if the guy could still fight. You know, I was in uh, Mendota prison when I saw him dethrone Vasily Lomachenko. And I was just so impressed with the guy. And uh, yeah, man, same impressive behavior. He... Even the first three rounds when people were saying, you know, Taylor blanked him, I thought most of them were pick em rounds, right? And I thought the rest of the fight he dominated. So it was great. It was great for boxing. But the thing that's funny to me is the antics going on now. You know, him uh, relinquishing the title and, you know, everything else. It doesn't make a whole lot of business sense unless you're trying to do some Floyd Mayweather, Tank Davis type stuff. So, you know, we'll have to see where it all falls from. I hope he gets a break because remember last time, he left Bob Arum to do a Cambosis fight with somebody else and lost the title in that Cambosis fight. Now, you know, since, you know, since uh, maybe last time we talked, now they've announced that Spence and Crawford are going to fight. What do you think about that coming up? Uh, incredible fight, man. I mean, that is uh, what that's the Tommy Hearns, uh, Ray Leonard of our era. You know, those fights come around, what, once every 30 years? You know, it's going to be absolutely incredible. I Like most of the experts, I pick Crawford, right? But I, I don't know that it's 100% correct. You know, I mean, Spence is an animal. Knocking out Ugas, I mean, he's just an incredible fighter. So we're going to get a real treat out of that one. Hopefully they actually mix it up instead of feel each other out. Because, you know, for the first time, I think, ever, they're both in a ring with someone as good as they are. And that's what makes the fight so thrilling. Hopefully it turns out like, you know, Leonard Hearns did. What do you think about the uh, Lomachenko Haney decision? Oh, terrible decision, man. But you know, th those are the breaks in boxing. You know, and and I don't necessarily think they're fixed. It's just people have these preconceived notions and whatnot, and sometimes they don't believe their own eyes. And it just, you know, I'm mean, pretty obvious to me that Lomachenko won that fight. But you know, it is what it is. That's that's why boxing really has suffered where MMAs come up. You know, in MMA, those decisions, I mean, they happen, but they're rare, right? Um, and, but in boxing, it's the norm. You have a great fight, and you think one guy won, and he gets robbed. 
And, and the sad part is, you know, if Lomachenko didn't fight again, everybody just forget about it. And it, it's unfair, man. It, it destroys careers and whatnot. So, yeah, sad, sad day for boxing with that. The good news for boxing is we have – so many good fighters between 135 and 147. I think we'll get to see a lot of them mix it up, and it'll be good. Maybe let's talk about Nunez uh, retiring. What did you think of that? Well, she's done it all, man. You know, I I I agree. You know, and and she's got a family. She's got a kid now. You know, her her wife just retired recently too, right? Said I'm going to spend more time with family. She's got money, you know, uh, as much as women's M and A can bring her right now. So what what more is there to do? She knocked out Cyborg. She knocked out Rousey. Um, you know, she avenged the defeat to Pena. You know, it's funny to me. My my teammate uh, Alexis Davis subbed. Amanda Nunez in another lifetime, you know, and it just always makes me step, smile because Alexis Davis is a little girl. She's good, but she's little. And, you know, I this metamorphosis of Nunez, you know, reminds me of, you know, that's drugs is how we get there. But, you know, she's either good at faking it or she has some Brazilian root, whatever it is, man. She went out as the goat. Now, something that came out today um, was that Dana White has pitched to Tyson Fury this hybrid fight. Do you think it's going to materialize? Um, you don't know. No. I mean, listen, I think the reason McGregor uh, Mayweather materialized is because, you know, Dana and the UFC were willing to take five million bucks and step aside. Um, but I think Dana's ego is so big, you know, it's it's never going to pass the Fury muster. I mean, remember, we had Usyk taking 25 percent or something of the purse in order to fight Tyson and it still didn't land up happening. So yeah, I just don't see Dana's ego and Tyson's ego fitting into the same space. I just don't see it happening. One other thing I want to ask um, or let you go here. And that was with this McGregor thing coming out, do you think the UFC is going to wash their hands of him, especially since, you know, this Chandler fight doesn't look like it's going to happen. Like I had mentioned before, do you think they're still going to tolerate him or no? Yeah, yeah, I do. I think, uh, you know, he's one of the blessed ones in Dana's world. And I think they're going to wait for the investigation to take place. Now, look, if it turns out that Connor raped that girl in that bathroom and security forced her in there, like she's saying, uh, yeah, they're going to wipe their hands with him like, like anyone would. But they're going to wait until that's conclusive. Yeah. So do you have any kind of stories that you want to add to this? <laughs> no, man. I mean, listen, Todd. I'm back working in martial arts. I, you know, I'm loving it again. Uh, listen, with the fight game has never been better, man. And by the way, what I want to add is I can't believe I keep seeing your show and news articles now. Everybody's talking about you, Todd. It's awesome, man. Yeah, I have a show coming up with somebody, and these are his stories, so I'm not going to put them out. But I think it's going to cause some, some more of that kind of stuff because he's – He's he's got some interesting stuff coming up, so I think it's going to surprise some people, especially if it happens. It would it probably surprise me a little bit. I hope you're going to tell me what that is backstage. Yeah, yeah, I'll I'll tell you. But uh, you know, I appreciate you taking time to do this first one. So people, this is something that we'll probably do like once a week, if you know, when Derek has time, and kind of recap some stories and you know. I'm not always going to be able to break stories. It's hard to do this kind of stuff. You know, when people don't know uh, to be the first one is pretty difficult. But uh, if I can, I'll break them on these uh, shows as well. So, yeah, it's a good show, Stop Derek. We know your name now, man. I think I think this is a, this is a breakout. Yeah. What, what do you think about like guys like Errol Hawani and them not mentioning me? Well, bro, that's ego. You know, look, that's why did the scrap pack says I stink at fighting? You know, it's ego, man. And Hawani's going to keep your name out of his mouth as much as he can. And by the way, I mean, just like, did you notice, like, after the whole shield thing went off and I responded with a few videos, it's been crickets, man. I know you're going to try to get those guys. I'm not telling. That's how guys, you know, in the power deal with it. It's it's the old Vince McMahon. I'm not going to mention the NWA and Ric Flair at all. They don't exist. 
you know, I did a video about this, but, you know, I think it's something that's important for people to know and people who don't know me. It, you know, it didn't shock me that people came at me. They don't know me. They're like, who is this guy that would have, <laughs> you, does this guy actually think he has something before other people? But one thing that I want to say is uh, pretty much all the major promoters in the sport are our age, you know, so a lot of the people that were around back in the day that were involved in growing the sport, some of whom are still in the sport, most of them who are not. They're also our age. So, you know, I'm still in contact with these kind of people. And I think some of the newer, even Ariel for that matter, they don't they don't see value in those people. They they're they're not doing anything anymore. So they're not relevant. But a lot of these people do have uh, stuff they can share. So yeah, that's Todd, my opinion. World, brother. You know what I mean? Like we glorify youth. And, you know, especially the fight game, right? Because mm -hmm. to be really top-notch, we know it's not true, but a lot of them are young, right? They have the energy and whatnot. And you get couture's, and I think that just lends itself to what you just talked about. They dismiss us, Todd, but you're you're fighting for us, buddy, brother. Keep it up. No, but I mean, like, you have a circle of people that have a very extended Rolodex that are our age, and they still talk to each other. So it's not like you can't get something out of these people. So it's just something for people to think about. Yeah, no, I love it, man. You're absolutely right. But, you know, look, ego is a weird thing. And it manifests itself big time in the fight game. All right, Derek. Well, you know, it was great talking to you again. And uh, look forward to doing another one of these. Let you bring some stories into it. And for everybody that supports this show, I appreciate it. Check out Derek. Derek, why don't you tell people where they can check out some of the stuff you're doing? Sure. So if you like combat sports, my, my book, Warrior of the Light, is on Amazon. Um, if you want to hear about my views on the fights coming up, boxing and MMA, it's at Derek Galanis on TikTok. If you guys are more into crime and mafia, my book is Greed and Fear, the Galanis Crime Family, also on Amazon and on TikTok, at Derek Meyer Galanis. I put both those videos, or I try to put them on Instagram at Derek Galanis, but you're going to get both that way. So yeah, there, there's where I am. All right, Derek. Well, as always, it was great talking with you and uh, for everybody that supports the show. Till next episode, take care.